Okay, so I want to take a few minutes here to explain something that's very important, probably the most important uh, aspect of the method that I use that I've been showing on the channel that I've sort of mentioned in a fragmented way, but I want to cover just a little bit more exclusively here, just so everybody knows. Okay, so for me, I have a system of paint that I use that I stick to and I'm not changing. And I'll tell you why. Because I know that these paints work together in the way that I apply them, okay? So scientifically, I know that if I keep doing the same process over and over again, I'm going to get the same result because I know that, right? Okay? Now, artistically, that's a whole different ball game altogether. Like, funny things can happen. You can get creative, try different effects. And they might work in your favor and they might not. But at least if you have a basis of paint on your palette that you trust and are familiar with, then you should stick with that, whatever it is. I like Tamiya predominantly because I think it's one of the best pigments in the world and it has both flat and gloss colors. And it has all the primary colors, so I'm not worried about shades. And it has quite a good selection of color shades as well, or tones, if you want to call it that. Whereas uh, Vallejo Model Air is way beyond that. Like their choice of colors is off the charts. Now that's one of the reasons why I like Vallejo. But I only usually put Vallejo over top of Tamiya, and I'll tell you why. But first let me say I don't normally spray Vallejo through the airbrush because I don't need to. And it's not as friendly with IPA as Tamiya is. Tamiya paint loves IPA, this here. It, 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 like it's a marriage made in heaven. And so I can extend this pigment uh, over and over and over again. I can make this bottle into four or five bottles of blue and paint models with it and, and, and get really good coverage with an airbrush. Now, if I airbrush a model like this, like this model, let's say perhaps, and then I airbrush Tamiya base coat onto it, I can keep spraying subsequent layers of Tamiya IPA based paint over top of it with no ill effects. It'll just keep covering itself, right? But if I want to take Tamiya later and, and with a traditional brush and then that's IPA based or thinned, and I want to start brushing the Tamiya based airbrush model, you're going to cut through and wreck the paint job. Like if you don't care about that, you want a rough, like just like, like let's just say you're doing a 125th, you know, Chevy Biscayne out in the yard, you know, overgrown with grass and moss, and you don't care what the finish looks like, then that's great. Then do that. That's the art of paint. But that's not the science of paint because you know you're not going to get the same result if you try something different, right? Okay, that you're not familiar with. So the reason why I use Vallejo Model Air water-based over to me is because this paint, no matter what I do over to me, it won't cut through it. It won't eat through the Tamiya base layer because it's not IPA based, right? I don't know what the chemical property is that Vallejo uses, but if I shoot it through the airbrush, I use their recommended product. But I use IPA with Tamiya because I've been doing it for 25 years plus, and I know that it works over and over again, and it's cheap 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 so I can flush through my airbrush do tons of washes if I had to use their thinner even though I really like their paint I'd be broke right okay so that's one of the reasons for that okay now if I want to lay this Tamiya with a traditional brush over top of Tamiya like I've done here you got to kind of blob the paint on it's hard to explain like you just get a really wet brush you shake it up good often and then you bring it in, right, and instead of brushing, you just sort of flood it on. Then you're okay. Then you won't have any problems, right? But if you start to agitate the, the touch-up Tamiya over this original Tamiya, there's a good chance you're going to cut through. And in this case, it would get really ugly because there's raw umber under here, which is Tamiya and the blue, and it's not going to end up with a good result. Now, if I want to apply 
Vallejo over to me, I can do it all day long. It doesn't matter. I can put thin, agitate with the brush. This will not cut through the tomato. So that's why I use these two paints together because I love to put Vallejo washes over Tamiya based paint because Tamiya gives, puts a beautiful finish over all the detail. I mean, I'm not going to paint this by hand and wreck all this detail. That's why I airbrush it because airbrushing will give you just a beautiful, pristine coverage of whatever paint you want to use. But then I like to come back later with washes and highlight and shadow and do stuff. And I know that these two paints or this method is a marriage made in heaven for me. It might not be for you. Now, having said that, before I close about the cleaning, you can put oil-based, solvent-based, mineral-based, not acetone ever. Don't ever put acetone on your models. And try to avoid turpentine as well if you can and use odorless mineral spirits which is the similar property, but it, it has no odor and it seems to be quite safe. Turpentine can go funny on you and turn paint glossy, like flat paint. So I try to, so, well, I avoid that altogether. One of the reasons why, again, I use acrylics because they got the most unbelievable flat qualities to them, even over enamels. Now I can put oil paint, uh, thinned enamels over this acrylic paint, Vallejo and Tamiya mixed on this model all day long once it's dry. And it won't hurt the model, right? And then once everything is dry, including the oils, then you can choose to flat coat what you want. But I'm not going to tell you to flat coat over top of oil paint with acrylic because you could end up with a problem there as well. So that's why I try to stay with mostly acrylics now. And I'll use a little bit of oils in certain cases. But if I'm going to flat coat later, then I try to do the flat coat first, acrylic over acrylic, and then put the oil wash over top of the model and then leave it. Don't put any more flat finish over top. Now, when you clean your brush with Vallejo, you just use water, right? Like here, let me show you. You just use water. And then at the end of your paint session, uh, I like to use IPA just to get any micro pigments out of the brush, just to, to preserve the ferrule on the brush. Because it, like eventually paint will build up in the ferrule and that's what splays them out eventually. So if you want to uh, keep a nice tip on your brush, I use IPA and they'll last longer because they'll clean uh, the pigments out where the water won't. Now, you can take Tamiya like this and dip it into water and clean it. See it flood away? If you're doing it fast. But if this paint, Tamiya, starts to dry, you're going to have to clean it with IPA, which you should anyway. Okay? And you can do that with Vallejo, but you'll get funny results if you start introducing IPA to Vallejo, I've found. But if it's 50% or lower, sometimes you can get away with it. But this is 99%, and I use 99% because per volume I get more for my money. Like if I take this 99% IPA and I cut it in half with distilled water, then I'll get two bottles of 50% isopropyl alcohol, which is fine for any of the, well, for, for Tamiya anyway. So you can mix water with Tamiya and put washes on your model all day long. It'll minimize the cut rate with a traditional brush on a base coat of Tamiya. But be very careful if you ever go onto a Tamiya painted model with a traditional brush, there's a good chance you'll cut through, even if the model's been dry for a month. That's the advantage of running Tamiya paint through your airbrush. The IPA will always dissolve it away, whereas it won't so much with this paint or enamel, etc. Okay?